All right, in this lesson, we're going to be solving absolute value inequalities and using absolute value inequalities to solve real life problems. An absolute value inequality is an inequality that contains an absolute value expression. For example, the absolute value of x is less than 2 and the absolute value of x is greater than 2 are absolute value inequalities. Recall that the absolute value of x equals 2 means the distance between x and 0 is 2. So if we look down here, the inequality, the absolute value of x is less than 2 means the distance between x and 0 is less than 2. Okay? So this graph can represent that. Okay? So the way that we can uh, write that is basically unwrapping it, the way that I say that, is we unwrap the absolute value and we get the absolute value of x is greater than negative 2 and the absolute value of x is less than 2. And I'll explain why that is the case uh, in the next section. The inequality on the right, the absolute value of x is greater than 2, means that the distance between x and 0 is greater than 2. Okay? So this graph right here represents the solution set for this absolute value inequality. Okay? The graph of the absolute value of x is greater than 2 is the graph of x is less than negative 2 or x is greater than 2. So just a quick uh, tip here. Anytime that you see the absolute value symbol is less than something, it's going to be an AND statement. And anytime you see the absolute value of your variable is greater than something, it's going to be an OR statement. The way we're going to solve these is by turning the absolute value expressions into compound inequalities. So the core concept, to solve absolute value of AX plus B is less than C, for c is greater than 0, solve the compound inequality, ax plus b is greater than negative c, and ax plus b is less than c. And I'm going to show you why that's the case right here. So if I rewrite absolute value of ax plus b is less than c, the way we would normally solve an absolute value equation is to unwrap it, we would say ax plus b equals positive c, and then ax plus b equals negative c. Well, in this case, we're going to do it slightly differently. I'm going to show you this way. I'm going to unwrap this, but instead of having the negative on the right side, I'm going to have the negative on the left side. For equations, it doesn't matter, but for absolute value expressions, it does. Okay, So I'm going to rewrite this as ax plus b is less than c. So that's the positive version. And then I'm going to have negative ax plus b is less than c. And if we notice, I can turn this whole left side into um, positive ax plus b by just dividing by negative 1 or multiplying by negative 1 on both sides. Okay? But whenever I multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number, I have to flip the symbol. So now I get ax plus b is greater than negative c. Okay? So I have ax plus b is greater than a negative number. And then over here, I have ax plus b is less than a positive number. Okay, And the AND compound inequality is going to be the only way to represent this. Okay, So that's why this is our compound inequality uh, for the less than scenario. Now I'm going to talk about the greater than scenario down here. So I'm going to slide over, and I have the absolute value of ax plus b is greater than c. Once again, we're going to unwrap this, and I'll slide it over again. Uh, and I'm going to keep both of the positive and the negative on the left side here again. So I'm going to have ax plus b is greater than c. And over here, I'm going to have ax plus b in parentheses because I want the opposite of that is greater than c. And once again, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1 to get this back to ax plus b. And I get ax plus b, I have to flip my inequality, is less than negative c. So now I have ax plus b is greater than a positive number. And then I, oh, down here I have ax plus b is less than a negative number. The only way that would make sense uh, is, is if it's an either-or statement. So this has to be an or statement. And then back over here, this one was the and statement. So I'll write that in there too. Okay. Now, you don't really need to necessarily know this in order to solve this, but this is why um, we unwrap these absolute value inequalities the way we do. Solve each inequality 
graph each solution if possible. So for example, A, I have the absolute value of x plus 7 is less than or equal to 2. So I'm going to unwrap this inequality. Okay. Now, you don't need to unwrap it like the way I just did it in the last example. All you got to do is remember to flip the symbol for the negative. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite this as x plus 7 is less than or equal to positive 2. And then I'm going to write x plus 7 is greater than or equal to negative 2. See how I flipped the symbol and made the right side negative. Okay. So now, if I look back, I see that this is a less than, less than or equal to or less than, it still works. Uh, this is going to be an and statement. And if you didn't uh, know that off the top of your head, you can kind of figure it out on your own. But this is going to be an and statement. I'm going to combine these inequalities, uh, and then I'm going to solve them. You could solve them first and then combine them. Either way works. Uh, so right now I see that x plus 7 is less than 2. I, I also see that x plus 7 is greater than negative 2. I can rewrite this as negative 2 is less than or equal to x plus 7. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative 2 is less than or equal to x plus 7 is less than or equal to 2. Okay, and then just to solve, I just have to subtract 7 from each section of this compound inequality. And now I get negative 9 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to negative 5. And then to graph this, I'll just draw my number line, put my two values here, negative 9, negative 5. Since we have the equal to here, and apologize about this uh, bad inequality symbol, but I have the equal to here, so that means that I'm going to fill in my circles. We're going to have closed circles here. And then I'm going to fill in between them. So that is the compound inequality and graph for example A. If we go back to example B, I will draw a little barrier here. I see that I have the absolute value of 8x minus 11 is all less than zero. Well, I want you to think about examples before you try them, because if you think about this, the absolute value, which can never be less than zero, we're saying we're setting this less than zero. So we're saying we want to know all the values that could pop out of an absolute value expression that are essentially negative. Anything that is less than zero is negative. But that can never be the case. You can never have a negative number come out of an absolute value. So this is an instant no solution. There is no number that I can plug in for x to make a negative number come out of an absolute value. So we're done with this one. Solve each inequality, graph each solution. All right, so now we're just going to practice some of these. So for the first one, I'm going to unwrap. I get c minus 1 is greater than or equal to 5. And I know it's greater than. This greater than tells me it's going to be an or statement. And you could figure that out if you, weren't, if you didn't memorize that. So now it's going to be c minus 1 is less than or equal to negative 5. So I get c minus 1 less than or equal to negative 5. So now I'm going to solve both of these. I'm going to add 1 on every side of the um, both inequalities. So now I get c is greater than or equal to 6, or c is less than or equal to negative 4. Okay. Now to graph this, I'll draw my number line. And I'll put my two values, negative 4 and 6. So I have c is greater than or equal to 6, so that's going to be a closed circle pointing to the right. And then I have c is less than or equal to negative 4. It's going to be a closed circle pointing to the left. So we want to see if our answer makes sense. And we look here, the absolute value, remember the absolute value is the distance from 0 um, of this expression. And we want that to be larger than 5, so that, that's why they're pointing away from each other. Okay? When it's less than, it, it, we want the absolute value to be smaller than 0. Okay? So anyway, that's how to uh, solve and graph this for part A. For part B, I have the absolute value of 10 minus m is all greater than or equal to negative 2. So if I look at this one right away, I have the absolute value of something right here is greater than or equal to a negative number. Remember. 
no negative value is going to come out of this absolute value. So basically, I have a number that is not negative is greater than or equal to a number that is negative. This is going to be true all the time. It does not matter what m is. Any situation that we have is going to make this true. So this is the all real numbers situation. So I'm going to write down all real numbers. And that is the answer for part B. You don't even have to do any work. You just have to identify the all real number situation. For part C, I have a multi-step uh, absolute value inequality. So remember, when we're solving these, we want to isolate the absolute value expression first. Then we can unwrap it, which is the same thing as writing our equivalent inequalities. Uh, and then we will uh, figure out what our final compound inequality is. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel out this addition that's happening to my absolute value expression term. So I'm going to subtract 1 on both sides. I get 4 times the absolute value of 2x minus 5. 5 is greater than 20. Now remember, this 4 is being multiplied by this absolute value expression. So to cancel out multiplication, I can either divide by 4 or multiply by 4's reciprocal, which is 1 fourth either way. So I'm going to divide 4 on both sides. I get the absolute value of 2x minus 5 is greater than 5. Okay. Now I have successfully isolated my absolute value expression. So the next thing I'm going to do is unwrap this. Okay. So I'm going to write my two equivalent inequalities. So I have 2x minus 5 is greater than positive 5. Or I have 2x minus 5 is less than negative 5. So now I'm going to um, add 5 to each side of both inequalities. And over here, I get 2x is greater than 10, or 2x is less than 0, because the negative 5 and the positive 5 cancel. Okay. Now, the last step for both is to divide both sides by 2, because we're multiplying x by 2. And then I get x is greater than 5, or x is is less than 0. Remember, 0 divided by 2 is 0. So now I will graph my compound inequality here. There's my number line. Put 0 and 5. We're going to have open circles, because there's no equal to. And then I have x is greater than 5, which are these values. And then x is less than 0, which are these values. So here is our compound inequality. And here's the graph of it. And now we're done. The absolute deviation of a number x from a given value is the absolute value of the difference of x and the given value. So you can see right here in our equation, the absolute deviation equals the absolute value of x minus our given value. Okay. So we're going to use that in example three. You are buying a new computer. The table shows the prices of computers in a store advertisement. You are willing to pay the mean price with an absolute deviation of at most $100. How many of the computer prices meet your condition? So what we want to do is we want to just add up all 10 of these computer prices and find the mean by dividing by 10. Okay, So we'll add these up, divide by 10. And then what we want to do is we want to see how many of these computers fit within our given value. So first I'm going to find the mean. I'm just writing all the numbers down. On this one, you'd probably want to use a calculator, but I'm going to do it out just for the fun of it. So I'm going to add these up right now. So you see I have two fives and then zero, so that's going to give me 10. Then I get 1 plus 9 is 10, 15, 21, 26, 28, 33, 40, 
47, 52, and 54. So now I get 13, 19, 25, 29, 36, 43, 46, 52, 58, and 66. So this is the total price of all the computers. Since there's 10 of them, to find the mean, I'm gonna divide this by 10, which is pretty easy. I'd have to do 6,640 divided by 10, just cross a zero off, I get my mean of 664. So that is our mean. If we go back up here, our absolute deviation is just the absolute value of x minus our given value. Well, here our given value is the mean. And we want this to be no more, or at most, $100. So I'm gonna rewrite this as the absolute value of x minus our given value here, which is the mean, which is 664. Okay, and we want this to be at most $100. At most, as an inequality, is less than or equal to 100. Okay, and now I just wanna solve this inequality. So I'm gonna unwrap it, because it's already isolated. So my equivalent inequalities, I'm gonna move over a little bit. We're gonna be x minus 664 is less than or equal to 100. And x minus 664 is greater than or equal to negative 100. Okay? Uh, so now I'm going to solve both of these inequalities, and then I'm going to combine them. Earlier, uh, when we did a problem like this, I combined them first and then solved. You can do either way. So I'm going to add 664 on, on all sides of each inequality. So now I get x is less than or equal to 764, and x is greater than or equal to 564. So now I'm gonna turn this into a compound inequality. So this is the same thing right here. x is greater than or equal to uh, 564. This is the same thing as 564 is less than or equal to x. So I'm going to rewrite this as 564 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 764. So this is my price range right here, okay? 564 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 764. So I'm going to go back to my chart here. I'm actually going to move this over here so it's easier to see. So I have my pr computer prices listed here. So I'm gonna see if uh, these fit within this compound inequality. 890 does not, so I'm gonna cross that one out. 650 does work, so I'll give it a check. 660 works. 450 does not, so I'll cross it out. 725 does work. 750 does work. 370 does not work. 670 does work. 650 does work and 825 does not work. So the prices that have the check mark next to them, these are the computer prices that will be within $100 of our mean value, which was 664. So if I zoom back in here, it says how many of the computer prices meet your condition? Well, we just checked them all off, and I see one, two, three, four, five, six computer prices. So that's our answer. Six computer prices meet our condition. And now we're done with this one.